appreciate you taking time out of your Saturday morning to be here, you know, for the Small Business Forum. This is our second year organizing and hosting this event uh, in celebration of National Small Business Week. We're also celebrating and observing Armed Forces Day, uh, recognizing our military personnel who are out there fighting, um, you know, for our safety here in America. So if you have any members of the armed services out in our audience, can you please stand so we can recognize you? Members of the armed forces. Thank you very much. And one of the things that um, we're doing today also, we're having a raffle for the Wounded Warrior Project. And Thompson Management Consulting is, is, a, is a contributing member uh, to the Wounded Warrior Project. It's an organization uh, that works specifically with wounded soldiers, wounded um, members of the military, uh, various military branches. Those soldiers who have come back from active duty, um, from, suffering from PTSD, missing limbs, uh, soldiers who have um, had their homes foreclosed and uh, lost jobs and having, uh, having uh, a terrible time just basically living a normal life. You know, so that organization raises the awareness um, of the struggles these soldiers endure. Uh, so uh, what we're doing today is having a raffle so that we can um, help raise funds to, to contribute to the organization to help, um, help those soldiers um, who are basically in dire need, right? And uh, so we have two major raffle gifts out there. And um, I want to really thank uh, for the painting. We have, we want to thank the Lonely Gallery, um, Carolyn Knight, Catherine Wright and Sylvia Culberson representing the Lone Gallery. Um, Mr. Bob Lample representing uh, Business Plans and More. Um, we have uh, executive business consultants uh, who, the gentleman, uh, one of the consultants, couldn't be here today. Uh, so he, he's uh, basically spending time with family because he had a, a, a family emergency, so he couldn't be here this morning. So we really want to thank them for contributing to our the, the gifts for the World Memorial Project. <laughs> so a little bit about National Small Business Week, and for those who, for the benefit of those who were not in attendance at the previous workshops, um, National Small Business Week, this is the 52nd year in, uh, for the nation celebrating National Small Business Week, which recognizes and celebrates the achievements of our nation's small businesses and entrepreneurs. Uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners who play an integral role in creating 65% of the net jobs that are created in this country. Right? Uh, entrepreneurs who serve as visionaries and change makers, uh, introducing new products and services to the markets or various markets. So we celebrate those entrepreneurs like yourselves who are in the audience this morning, small business owners and entrepreneurs who are, you know, um, show that can-do spirit. Right, and breaking out and taking the risk of creating your own businesses. So we're celebrating um, the 52nd year. Uh, National Small Business Week was first celebrated in 1963 uh, from a proclamation that was uh, passed by Congress, uh, first issued by President, then President John F. Kennedy, uh, at, at a time when uh, the nation was looking to really show uh, show appreciation for the small businesses that are really driving the economy of America and keeping America strong. So, 52 years later, National Small Business Week is celebrated around the United States. Uh, you, you finally, uh, basically, mainly see that organized from our various uh, small business administration offices, the various chambers uh, across across the state of Georgia, across the nation. Uh, but Thompson Management Consulting, as a consulting company working with entrepreneurs and small business owners, really wanted to play an integral role. And we consult with small businesses, with small business owners, entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, helping them to fulfill their dream of starting their business. But we also wanted to play that integral role in celebrating the achievements of our small businesses because without our small businesses, you know, we couldn't drive the economy of the United States as we are today. And even as we're coming out five years removed um, from emerging from the Great Recession, uh, we see uh, our small businesses coming back, small business activity. Uh, we're seeing discretionary income increasing, which is important to small businesses. You know, 
Um, and, you know, we, we just wanted to, to be a part of that, you know. So what we do with the Entrepreneurship and Small Business Summit is organize events like this, you know, annually during National Small Business Week as a way to give back to our entrepreneurs and small businesses and say thank you. Say thank you for, for what you do as far as starting businesses, for taking the risks, you know, um, taking that leap and that, having that can-do spirit to show that, yes, you know, we can you know, start this business and create new uh, opportunities out there. So thank you again for being here this morning. Some of the uh, funds that we have in our costs from the $1.3 million uh, capital improvement and consent decree that we wanted to make sure that small business were a part of that. So initially we did uh, quite a few things. We made sure that uh, the workshops were done, that we had open access to what was going on in the program, and make sure that we have uh, ample information for companies like yours that want to do uh, business with DeKalb County. It is Panamount that will continue to support small businesses to find uh, the reasons that uh, we can't get uh, people into business. There are a lot of opportunities for business in the Cab County and the state of Georgia. We just need to have access to information. A lot of us face a lot of challenges with small businesses uh, when we try to tempt small business. Some have problems with funding. Some have problems with credit. Some have problems even with workforce and maybe payroll. And so we want to, as a county, to make sure that you have those things that you need uh, to make sure that your company runs fluently and that we can help you to get those done. What are some of the challenges that you have, as I stated, about credit and funding, those kind of things? You have problems with challenges for health care. Oftentimes, when people say that they don't like uh, Obamacare and they don't like making sure that our health care workers, our workers are taken care of with health care. Uh, those are some of the fundamental things that we have to do in our country to make sure that we take care of our people. We talk about the things that's going to make us strong again. I know that you're small business, but we talk about minimum wage. But there are people that still have disposable income in America and in the Cab County and the state of Georgia that are just not making. And so we have to look at household income and minimum wage. We have to look at sexism and racism as it relates to small businesses. There are so still there are those challenges out that make it hard for us to do business just because of the color of our skin and because of our sex. And so we have to raise those challenges to make sure that we can do a better job and be uh, what we can do uh, for America and for the Cab County. So basically I just came by to say that we support you, that we're going to make sure that it works. I'll take a, uh, a pause from, I think Melanie Hobson said it best in uh, one of her books and one of her uh, speeches. She said, there's still problems in America when you go into a boardroom and you don't have a problem with everybody sitting at the table being all black or everybody sitting at the table being all white. We should look at what we need to do in America to make sure that we have diversity on our board of directors and our small business will continue to grow and make sure that the challenges that are in front of us can be eradicated so we can be successful businesses in America and here in the Cap County. So on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, on behalf of our interim CEO, I'd just like to say that our doors are open for you. If there's anything that we can do for you, please give us a call and we certainly will respond. Thank you and have a good morning. We're not going to let you get away yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we thank you very much for stopping by thank you. and saying a few words. Thank you, uh, we have a lot of entrepreneurs and small businesses, business owners out here who really appreciate your words and your presence. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you so very much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Process improvement um, and systems because it, it's, it's almost like if you want to make sales, but you have a line of customer complaints about they didn't receive something or some step was missed that they were promised, and you have to do research to find out what really happened and you have to address it. And so if you don't have good processes in place so that the, the, the process can flow from, from marketing to sales to all the deliverables, 
You know, it, it's, the, it's a real big difference between really sporadic revenue coming in and really consistent flowing revenue. The other thing is, is that you really have to be mindful of um, being self-sufficient. Don't feel like you have to get on every single platform, do everything that everybody is doing. Know your target audience so that you're speaking directly to them. Make sure you're consistent with your branding, even across the social media platforms. Try to get the same name on all the social media platforms. So get involved with the Chamber. They can help you in so many different ways. Uh, networking also. They're, you're tapping into other people's database of clients in so many different ways. I'm sure both chambers have networking events and groups you can go to. For me, the only thing I tell you to do is if you go to one of those, don't just go there, sit down, and stay put. Get there early, stay late, and meet and greet people because that's really where it all happens. Too many people join a chamber or visit a chamber and sit down and do nothing and don't get any leads out of it and they figure it's not working for them. They don't realize how it actually works. It takes several months oftentimes for you to get those actual leads, but I can promise you if you show up regularly at first, and they are quick, quick to forget about you when you quit coming, and, we'll, and get to meet great people before and after, that will happen. When we first joined the chamber, we were actually the first, I was the first company to join the chamber in their new building in Gwinnett uh, back in January, or excuse me, it was March 16th of 2000. And the next year in February, I did an inventory of jobs in progress, and these were closed sales. I had the jobs, I just had to get my, uh, or my group to get them out the door. And unfortunately, half this number was taxed, which my CPA was also real slow getting them out the door, but over. We had 89 jobs in progress. 65 of those originated through that chamber in one way or another. And, uh, and that's just phenomenal. You know, if you get involved, it will happen. Having your accounting system set up from the beginning, Please make sure you do that because there's no, you need a profit and loss and balance sheet. Make sure that that CPA understands the type of business that you do or it's not going to be right. And I went through that, I went through three, three attorneys and four CPAs before I got it right. So I'm saying to you guys on the front end, make sure, check with people who are in the same line of business you're in. And, uh, there's a story about uh, uh, a businessman who opened the store and he was selling. You know, things were going pretty well. And uh, one day he looked and realized that someone was opening a store next door, selling pretty much the same stuff. And this guy put a big sign that said, best quality. So he goes, oh. <laughs> so scratching his head, he said, what should I do now? Well, before he could finish, he realized that a lady had opened another store to his left. And uh, she put up an even bigger sign that said, Lowest price. <laughs> so I went to bed and he thought about it. And in the morning he had a great idea. He said, Okay, I'll put up my own sign. And his sign said, Main entrance. <laughs> <laughs> so the point is that we have competition and, and uh, a good entrepreneur has to be nimble, you have to be resourceful, think about your feet, and uh, expect the unexpected. But um, just to pick back and I think on what um, one of our speakers said, yeah, you need to pay attention to the costs. Um, I know a lot of people in business and they're, they're very sloppy when it comes to keeping up. But the cost is very important. For example, when I used to import coconut water and juices from Jamaica, I, I would fly them up directly from Montego Bay. Uh, and then I did that for years. And I realized if I went through Florida, the airfare is much cheaper, and then by truck, I could save a, a chunk of money. So, always looking out for uh, ways to keep your costs down. And that was a 